Hi, welcome to educators.com. In this module, we are going to discuss about what is Hive, need of Hive, difference between your Hive query language and structured query language, Hive architecture, and the Hive meta stores. What is Hive? So Hive is nothing but this is mainly to write your queries to process your data. That means in the earlier sessions if you see we have written the programs MapReduce Java programs to process your data. This Hive is mainly evolved from the Facebook and internally it uses you know you will be having a special language called Hive query language HQL. It looks similar to your SQL itself. So with the help of those HQL, what you can do is you can write your queries. You can create the tables, you can insert the data, you can query it, query it with the help of the select statement. All of these things you can do with the help of these hive. And also, this hive is mainly for the structured data. So if you are using the JDBC, ODBC interfaces, to connect to the Java programs also or mainly you can even connect them to the any of the reporting tool to display data as part of the reports like Oracle BIP like, uh, or Tableau or any reporting tools you can integrate easily with the Hive. And also if you see what is the need of this Hive? If you observe this, the major purpose of the hive is nothing but it hides the complexity of your map reviews because if you see the map reviews code it is quite a huge amount of the code lines of code is lines of uh, code is quite huge and also the maintenance of this java code is quite huge troubleshooting is tougher right so the mainly to hide the complexity of the map reviews and it also takes a lot of time consuming map reviews to avoid all of those things we do have a specific thing called Hive. Hive is, if you see the lines of code, it is very, very less number of the lines of code which you are going to write. As it looks similar to your SQL, it is very easy to write your code as well. So that is the reason why if you see this, uh, maintenance of the code is huge in the map reduce. That is the reason why here you can write a simple or code in the hive to process the same thing. So whatever we are doing in the map reduce like a word count or, or even the same thing even we can do it with the help of these hive as well. So we are saying that to write the hive we are using a specialized language called hive query language which is HQL. So what is the difference between the normal structured query language and the HQL? Normal structured query language is nothing but at the time of in the Oracle or in the MySQL, SQL servers, you will be writing the queries, right? So those are all the structured query languages. So if you see the difference between these two things, in terms of the latency, that means once you execute any of the query, in the SQL you can expect the results in the milliseconds or seconds. But in the HQL, it will take a lot of time. It will take even minutes and if it is a a huge amount of the data if you are going to deal with it will even take an hours as well. But in the SQLs there is a limitation of the size like hardly you can store it in the terabytes. But if you wanted to write the HQL this can be anything including the terabytes, petabytes, exabytes and it can be huge amount of the data also. In terms of the functions so in the SQLs, we do have a lot of functions, built-in functions are available. But here in the HQL, we do also have the built-in functions, but here are, we have only a few built-in functions. But sometimes, if the built-in functions are not sufficient for your need, what you can do is you can also create your own custom functions as well. You can write your UDFs, you can write your own functions too in the Hive. Multi-table inserts is nothing but, suppose I wanted to read a table once and I wanted to insert into the multiple tables at a time. That feature is not available in the SQL. 
in the HQL, it is supported because mainly when we are dealing with a huge amount of the millions of the records, we cannot every time read it, read the table and then load into the separate tables. It is very, very time consuming. Right. So here in the HQL, the multi-table inserts are supported. And the next feature is the views. From the SQL also we'll be creating the views mainly to hide the complexity of the queries. That means I have written uh, two lines of the query, very bigger query. For example, it consisting of a uh, uh, you know, lot of where clauses and lot of sub queries and everything. So I do not want it to display my entire query to the people. So what I can do is I can create a view and I can share that view name to my business team so that simply they can use that view. But in the SQL, those views are updatable, but in the HQL, these are simply read-only views. So for the modules, we are also we'll also see how to do the multi-table insertions, how to create a new functions, user-defined functions, how to create your views and in-depth about the data types and indexes. Everything will be seen with it, module by module. In terms of the data types, in the SQLs, we'll be mainly having the in flow double strings or any of the blob or clubs, any of the binary objects. In the HQL, in addition to those data types, we are also having the, the other data types, array, map, struct. We'll be seeing when to use them and how to use all of these uh, new data types in the HQL in the further modules. Indexes, the main way to improve the performance, we'll be creating the indexes, right? So in both SQL and the HQL, we can have these indexes in place. Both, are, both of the places indexes are supported. And if you see the architecture of the hive, the mainly you will be having the UI in the left hand side. This is the user interface. This is the place where you will be sharing your details, where you will be entering your details. Uh, hide query. You will be having your hide shell where you are writing your query. Suppose if you wanted to use the UI, GUI, you can even have that uh, GUI there. So since the UI is the place where you are writing your hide queries and executing your hide queries. So whatever you are writing here, you will be having a driver. So if you observe this purpose, the UI which we talk about, and if you are talking about the driver, it receives the query, whatever you are writing on top of your UI or shell, right? And this works like an interface. Like if you wanted to, uh, you know, because whatever the query you have written over here, it has to do the parsing, right? Whether the syntactically it is correct or semantically it is correct, it has to do that uh, parsing by the compiler. But before connecting to the compiler, it uses the driver and it fetches that particular. Thing. First, let me explain this diagram and then we'll uh, go there and see that each and everything about the individual components. See here, as the first step, it executes, and the second step, it does the compiler like it sets the parsing. Any of the syntactical errors are there, any of the semantical errors. That means, suppose I have chosen that select EMP ID, right? But in the employee table, that EMP ID is not there. You just have the employee ID, the full name, the full employee ID is there, but I'm simply checking with the EMP ID. So such kind of the checks you also will be taken care by your compiler. And this compiler internally it connects to the Metastore. This Metastore is nothing but this is the place where all your metadata is going to be stored. Metadata is nothing but suppose if I'm having an employee table. It's consisting of a EMP ID, EMP name, and the department ID, salary. These are all the employee details. Right? So the metadata is nothing but it's all about the column details. Like what are the columns available? What is the data types of the column? All such kind of the information is stored as part of your metastore. So here your compiler will connect to your metastore and it verifies whether those particular columns are available or not. Right, once it sends the metadata back, and what it has to do once 
or if the parsing is done and everything is done, it has to execute your query. So how is it executing? There is nothing there. Your compiler will be sending whatever the whatever the plan which we set it over here in the post stack, then connects to the execution engine. So this execution engine purposes whatever the query you will be having, it converts your query into the map reduce and also it submits your query to your map reduce engine. That means it can be a job tracker. In the previous module we understand that a job tracker and the resource manager. The older versions you can see a job tracker as a master in the map reduce. In the latest versions of the Hadoop, Yarn you can see it as a resource manager. So in simple words, your execution engine will be sending this query whatever you are having it to the job tracker for resource manager and here your job gets executed as part of your slave machines like your node managers or your task processes. This part is execution is similar to how we discussed in the previous modules when the job is submitted, what are all the steps will be involved behind the scenes. So once the job is done, it has to send back the results to the execution engine and then in the execution engine it will send back the results to the driver and then it display on top of your UI. This is how you can see the architecture. So if you see the main component, you can see the UI. This is the user interface where you will be writing your queries and executing your queries with the help of the high shell or with the help of the GUI. Driver is responsible. It takes the query, whatever the query you query in the UI, and it does check with the compilers for the parsing. Compiler internally connects to the meta stores to see the metadata information and it generates the plan. And to execute that uh, query, it will connect to the execution engine, which will in turn connect to your uh, job tracker or resource manager where your job is executed. Finally, Whatever the result we got it, it sent back to the execution engine. From there, you can see the, them on top of your UI. This is how you can see the high architecture. Whatever the components details I talk about the UI driver, compilers, meta stores, and the execution engine, the same details I have given as part of this presentation. And also in all of these components, the meta store is a very, very important component because you will be having your metadata, all your metadata information stores, like what are the columns, what are the data types, everything is stored here. If you think about the meta stores, we do have a different types of meta stores. We have meta stores available, embedded meta store, local and the remote meta stores. So what exactly these embedded meta stores consisting of this nothing but you will be having a, your metadata has to be stored in a place, right? So here by default it uses a Derby database. This is the database called Derby. All your metadata information by default stores here in the embedded meta store. But what happens in the embedded meta store is nothing but only one person can connect to your hive. If multiple shells wants to connect to your hive, it simply throws a message saying that one instance is already running in a previous shell. So, right, so in the simple words, embedded meta store it allow us to access only the single hive sessions. But in the productions or some of the non-productions, we want multiple users can connect to your hive, right? So that is the reason why either you can use local or remote meta store. So if you see local meta store or remote meta store, you will be having a separate database. Instead of the Derby, you will have a separate database, but most of the production, MySQL is a database which you will be using it for the meta stores in the hive. If you see this, you can have a multiple meta stores, I mean multiple of uh, JVM runs over here like drivers and meta stores. So that means, simple words, local meta store supports the multiple high sessions, unlike your embedded meta store. And whatever we are talking about, the high meta store server, it runs in the same process where exactly your high server is available. 
as part of your local. It is local to your hub server process. That is the reason why we say that it is a local meta store. But in terms of the remote meta store, it can be a separate machine. And also, remote meta store also, you can have a multiple hive sessions are available. Let's see this diagram. Then you can see a different types of clients. VLAN client, hive client, beeswax client, new. What exactly these things are nothing but? This is a shell, hive shell or VLAN client. This is the place where exactly you are executing your query. In case if you want to execute your queries from the hive shell, I mean how queries from the user interface, like a few, it will internally use the BSAC client. In the left hand side, whatever you can see, or these are the different types of clients. And here you will be having the meta store, and here, for example, the DB MySQL. And you can see that uh, you know, suppose it wants to connect to your meta store, then it uses the H catalog, wire H catalog, you have to interact with this meta store. And suppose when I'm executing the VLAN client, it internally uses your hive server to connect to your meta stores. That means in the remote meta store, your meta store service runs in the same process as a hive server, but your database can run in a separate process. Where in the local, it can even run in the same process. And also here you will be having your Switch catalog, hive server two, and any other process can communicate with the thrift server. You will be having something called a thrift service guys. With the help of the thrift service, all of these things can get connected. Alright, so here in the productions, likely you will be using either for remote meta stores, then sometimes even you can see the non for the local meta stores, but embedded will be having a single hive session, which is by default. So in this module, we understand what is Hive. We have seen that it is Hive is mainly to query and process your larger data set. Instead of writing the map radius programs, we can use your Hive query language queries you can process your data. And here, the major components, we have seen the UI, drivers, meta stores, execution engine. This meta stores is responsible to store all your metadata information and we have seen that from the their local and the remote meta stores are there. Different types of meta stores. Embedded uses the Derby database where in other uses mostly the MySQL. Thank you. Let's catch up in the next module.